So a few months ago, my transfer case seized. It could no longer endure the abuse it had received at the hands of the 3 litre M57. The additional speed and torque produced by the new engine, coupled with the lack of oil in the transfer case, had resulted in complete chaos. The only thing I could do was to get home and to start work immediately. So, oh, guess we'll have a proper look inside this, see what's done, <laughs> see what kind of damage is done in there. Looks burnt. Now, how did I know this transfer case was the issue and not something else? Well, I was on my way back from Wolverhampton, as a trip that I do weekly, and I noticed something wasn't right. I could smell burning oil, so I pulled over at the nearest service station, had a look underneath, and I noticed the transfer case was radiating large amounts of heat. So I touched the inspection cover with my index finger, and it was so hot it burnt my thumb. So that told me this case was overheating. I mean, now that we've stripped it down, I guess you can kind of see what's wrong. Um, these little fellas here are meant to be somewhere else, basically. Yeah, so I mean, the damage is not that bad. I mean, it doesn't really need them anyways. It's an LT230, it can take it. He's on the mark. He's on the zero again. 
I think we're good to go from there. The bottom sleeved, just need to do the top now when I'm trying to find the center. I think we're pretty, pretty close to that. So now that was pretty much a full day of machining. There's a lot of work involved in sleeving one of these. Now, you can buy these cases sleeved from the likes of Ashcroft Transmissions or uh, Synchro Gearboxes, but they do just the rear sleeve only. This is the front sleeve here. They supply a case uh, which is sleeved on the rear only. Now I asked Ashcroft, why don't they supply a sleeve for the front? And he said they rarely have issues with the front of the case. So they don't bother manufacturing them. I guess they have to, you know, buy them in bulks of a couple of hundred and it's just not worth buying if they rarely have those issues. So my case was damaged on the front and the back. So I had to make my own sleeve for the front. Now, when you think about it, the rear sleeve has no lateral pressure on it, if you want to say. The only pressure that's on it would be axial pressure, as in, you know, round. But in terms of pulling through the case, there's nothing really that would pull it, pull the sleeve through the case or push it out as such. But on the other side, that's different. You see this shaft here? We got the nut on the end of this shaft, which basically sets the preload on the tapered bearings. Now, that nut is going to pull this shaft through the case like this, which means it can pop that sleeve out the other side, if you know what I'm saying. That nut itself won't pull the shaft through. But if there's pressure on it, which there will be because of the gear type, it's going to pull this shaft through the case, which will pop that sleeve out of the front of the case. So to solve that problem, I have to do that sleeve in two halves. So if you can see just on the inside here, you can see the way I have a flange on the inside of that sleeve. And I have a flange on the outside as well. Now, basically all that's going to do for me is stop that sleeve pulling through this way and it's going to stop it coming back in also. So that sleeve is actually split in two. Now while I split it in two, seeing as I had to split it anyways, I decided to leave a small gap and put in a little o-ring in there as well. So anything that helps reduce the amount of oil that this thing loses is a, is a bonus. Because I don't want to get caught out like this ever again. Now, when I was taking the measurements for this, it was kind of tricky because I had nothing really to go off of. You know, seeing as my case was badly damaged on both sides, I couldn't really take any accurate measurements. I was able to get a decent enough reading from the from the rear of the case but on the front it was completely warped so when i took my measurements as i showed earlier i'd gone off this i clamped it down to the i clamped it down to the table and i was checking this here with my dial gauge and when i transferred it up to the top it just looked completely off like the hole was way off center and i thought this can't be right so i checked it two or three times and every time i'm getting the exact same measurement so I went with it in the end and it worked out perfectly. It just happened that that hole 
had basically burnt the case and it melted the aluminium so much that the aluminium had started to spin around the shaft. So you can see on the original shaft here, this is where it was spinning in the case. And that had got so hot that it had basically melted the aluminium and formed itself in a new place when I stopped driving. So it, it appeared as if the hole that I was born was way out of position. But where I was born was actually right and the hole that was there was completely wrong. So you can see now, this is the new shaft. This is uh, 300M, this is, you know, heavy duty. So this is gonna slide through here. It's got the seal on this end on the shaft and on the other end, the seal on my end is in the sleeve. So when we slide it through here, you can see it's a nice tight fit. You won't push it through by hand, which is exactly what you want. And there you have it. Nice, solid job. I can't see this part of the transfer case giving us trouble ever again. So now that I'm finished sleeving the old case here, next step, obvious one, is to start rebuilding everything. Now I've got all the parts I need, minus one or two little bits, like the little uh, retaining plate here for the front, which I'm certain I've seen somewhere. This is the old one here, and I'm certain I've seen a new one somewhere, but I just can't find it. But anyways, there's one or two little bits like that that I need to get, and I think we're good to start putting everything back in. So I'll get cracking with that. I won't go into too much detail with that. I'll show a few clips of it, but there's plenty of videos on YouTube probably show it better than I will on how to rebuild one of these things properly. So if you want to have a look at rebuilding it, you have a look at that. If you want to know how to sleeve one from the back, have a look at this video.